technology is the most powerful change in the world of education. Welcome to the video interview series Augmented Reality Based Technology in the Classroom, delivered to you by Clever Books Company. Good afternoon, everyone. So our podcast interview, Augmented Reality in the Classroom, is continuing. And today we have uh, such an amazing person with us in the studio, one of the influential voices in the edtech sector and nationally recognized uh, STEM educator, Rita Ferendina. Hello, Rita. Well, thank you, and I'm so delighted to be here and to share uh, all of the innovations that are happening around the world with your audience. So looking forward to hearing your opinion of, on immersive technologies in education in general, and specifically uh, if you could share your opinion about the augmented reality-based technology, how they change the education sector, what is actually the potential of those technologies nowadays, and how the schools already uh, bring them on board to benefit the kids' learning. So I have to tell you, I have been in this sector, the education sector, exclusively for the last uh, 25 years. And when I started my career in the 80s, we were just simply starting to introduce um, technology into our classrooms uh, by uh, teaching teachers um, what a mouse was and how to use a keyboard and the, the dramatic shift we've seen in 25 years is truly outstanding and so as we as technology continues to so quickly change and evolve we're seeing all sorts of new opportunities for our students to learn and this learning is opening up all kinds of new um, inquiry based learning opportunities and I'm most excited about AR and VR because of that because with um, AR and VR, you're going to, students are going to be able to actually see and tangibly be able to work with, uh, for example, in chemistry. They'll be able to look at the periodic table and they'll be able to break down the periodic table to its elements. They'll be able to remove and add el um, elements and combine elements right before their very eyes and actually see what the um, molecular structure, uh, how it changes. And that inquiry-based, active-based learning is truly um, the most uh, effective way for students to learn. And they'll be able to do this uh, at home, at their after-school programs, inside their classrooms. And, you know, AR and VR technology has become so terribly inexpensive. Um, here in the U.S., I, I took a photo, um, the Walmart discount stores had a big, huge sale on um, uh, VR uh, glasses for a dollar. So it is truly ubiquitous. Any student can have access to um, this technology. Uh, it is AR and VR is the change. It's coming to schools, and you're absolutely right. You know, uh, there are so many resources that are available for uh, for teachers and for educators to use at home or in the classroom. And I would be really interested to hear what your opinion is how it will actually influence uh, the kids' learning, all those visual technologies. So from my humble opinion, I think there's really two ways. One is, is that this is a way for active inquiry-based learning to occur uh, without being hugely disruptive to classroom management because students really will be able to actively learn sort of within their own, you know, personal sphere. And I think that um, because of that, um, the learning will be deeper and quicker and um, have an uh, Inquiry-based learning really adds to discovery and uh, it, it is an accelerant, right? So if mm -hmm. a student is uh, actively being able to learn something, they're often much more curious and building problem-solving skills and being interested in doing the next level, um, especially since um, many uh, students today are uh, using gaming technologies very regularly. I think this AR, VR will appeal to them in a, 
uh, poignant way. I think the other thing is that um, we're really seeing with AR and VR that students will pay and focus in and pay more attention. And the more time on task, the greater the results. So I think it's sort of that combination of they're paying more attention because they're really engaged and therefore they're building problem solving skills and they're building their own natural curiosity that's leading to um, increased learning outcomes. Okay, fantastic. And you mentioned about the skills that uh, augmented reality and virtual reality technology will help the kids to develop in general. Are there any other skills that kids can actually develop uh, by using this augmented reality technology that can help them in the future careers and help them to acquire this 21st century uh, skills that they will be needing to use uh, in the future? Well, first of all, we know from all of the workforce development research and um, uh, surveying that's being done is that we are in the midst of uh, a technology revolution and that the jobs in the future are all going to be based um, around a, a technology and being able to work with technology, use technology, problem solving with technology. So I can't see that VR will do anything other than enhance somebody's um, uh, skills to work in the modern workforce. I, I think that that's a natural flow. And I think that for me, the biggest thing ARVR is doing, besides all of the things I just mentioned, <laughs> is that it's training their minds to be able to work in this modern day workforce because they will be um, learning a lot of the problem solving techniques. How do you get to uh, the next piece? How do you get to the next level? How do you um, uh, manipulate and maneuver with the technology through? And that is all basic problem solving skills. I would agree on this one. And uh, if we come back to schools, it is immersive technologies. It is um, something that the schools are not familiar with. What things do you think would influence the uh, schools to actually adopt those technologies? And maybe also how long will it take before they fully enter, before they fully understand the potential of uh, visual technologies? So I think um, what we have just very recently seen, like seen within the last four or five years, is um, we had 3D printers that um, were introduced into the education market. And what we saw with 3D printers is that there was a very active interest in schools to be able to get 3D printers um, into their schools. And what we saw is that the price of 3D printers, um, as soon as it became, um, uh, they had a price point that schools could start to buy, they did. And once they got the 3D printers in the school, they started experimenting with where they could be used. And, and once we got applications for the 3D printers into education, we saw the usage skyrocket and the number of printers increased. So as soon as we had um, 3D printer applications for STEM subjects and STEM labs, that was a first nice start. But once we started seeing the applications for art classes and for music classes where they would start making their own instruments and where we saw the, them starting to be used in English language arts where they would read a book and then have a 3D printing activity um, to enhance what they were reading about. Um, we started to see them and now you'll find 3D printers um, very regularly. And I think the same is what we're gonna see with um, AR, VR. Um, because the price of the uh, glasses or technology has really um, become uh, affordable to schools, they're willing to buy them. What we have to have is good tools and curriculum support for uh, being able to integrate it in. And it's going to take a little time and it's going to take some classroom management um, expertise. But I think we're going to see um, this become, uh, it'll be adopted into schools around the world fairly quickly as the 
um, software tools to support them in increases. As far as I see that one of the main criteria for schools to be able to adopt Quaker it has to be obviously affordable, but also at the same time it has to have a strong curriculum base. So in a sense providing a very quality um, content uh, to supplement what has already been taught by traditional methods or any other methods using uh, computers in the classroom. Is, is that correct? I think that uh, it will move a little slower than that. I think you, you have the traditional way of a biology teacher teaches or a chemistry teacher teaches or a math teacher teaches and that the ARVR will be supplemental in nature at the start and I think as as the learning outcomes and the research around it becomes more solidified you'll see more movement toward um, that becoming more full curriculum uh, but I, I don't I think at the moment it will continue to be supplemental mm -hmm. um, as people um, familiar with how to teach using it and with the tools. Absolutely. And you've also mentioned that uh, before there actually going to be any proof how it c increases the uh, kids' results as far as I understand, how it improves their learning. Um, have you come across any research or any information if uh, something like that has already been done by either schools or certain organizations of proving that actually visual technologies like AR and VR do increase the test rates and uh, the, the learning outcomes? Um, anyway um, there are now um, education um, uh, organizations and associations that are starting to track that research and can be found by school administrators and teachers who are interested and it's free of charge okay that's fantastic I, I'm sure that uh, if the schools are interested in onboarding augmented or virtual reality it would be a lot of help to uh, do the research and actually understand the value of those innovative technologies I would like to kind of come back to the, a little bit of a difference between uh, virtual reality and augmented reality because uh, many teachers, many educators who are not familiar with, uh, with the technology yet, uh, they kind of mix it up a little bit and uh, would you be able to kind of explain in general what your perception of uh, virtual and augmented reality and what is the core differentiation maybe? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch on that. I'm going to say that um, I think that the definitions are still evolving and that the reason that we as an industry and in education are considering them to be one is really because um, in education, it's still, we're, in education, we're interested in tools that are effective to be teaching. And so I don't think we're seeing a big differentiator in our language and talking about them because we're looking at the tools and most of the tools are, are um, coming to us as AR VR tools or um, uh, so I, I'm putting them from my perspective into a category mm -hmm. of inquiry based tools and I don't know that um, there the industry um, is is starting to shift itself out but so I am here to encourage all of your listeners and viewers to try these tools and I don't want them to feel encumbered by one or the other or feeling like they need to we need you to um, just try and 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 work with the tools whether it's through uh, glasses or with um, simply your computer uh, tools just try. Well, that's a great suggestion, and I would really like to elaborate on this one and say, what would be your main suggestions uh, for teachers who haven't tried that or have already tried at least a virtual augmented reality a little bit? Uh, to you know, what what should they start with, or what should they do? How should they incorporate it in the class, and probably why? Why now? I have to tell you what made uh, me a convert mm -hmm. is I simply put the glasses on and tried myself. And I tried a few applications and I was converted, I was sold. And honestly, I think that what we're seeing with uh, vendors in this space is the ones that are making uh, a free trial available. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to get glasses or uh, VR, AR, um, to get, um, the technology to work. Um, my real suggestion is 
just try it. Just give it a chance yourself. And once you do that, um, uh, whether it's just a free download you find on the, on the web or whether you're at a conference or a trade show, um, but that's really my biggest suggestion is, is um, that once you experience it yourself, you will understand and see ways that maybe you could try it and incorporate it with um, some students or a group of students. And then from that, if you can try it with a group of students and experiment with how you would incorporate it into the classes you're teaching, it will evolve. So that's my advice. Try. Thanks, appreciate that. And I understand that there are so many technologies like augmented and virtual reality solutions that are quite easy to onboard and don't require um, you know, deep technical understanding of how to do that. Am I correct? Correct, absolutely. Hopefully that will also encourage teachers a little bit to try it out and uh, you know, get it on board much faster. Right, and you know, here in the U.S., uh, we have a summer break, and we are just entering that summer break, and so that is a tremendous time for uh, teachers to be able to uh, maybe have a little bit more time to experiment, and so the timing is beautiful for your uh, release of this podcast. <laughs> they have whole summer to try it, right, <laughs> and then bring something innovative on board for the next academic year. Exactly, exactly. So that's my gift, is <laughs> to say, uh, just, uh, just try it and see, and, and you will be convinced. Okay. And uh, if we come back talking to maybe one of your favorite experiences with uh, augmented reality uh, solutions, would you share which one that was and what really made it very special for you personally? Okay, so what made it very special for me was uh, I told you that I was really converted after I simply tried it myself. And um, I was so excited that I then came home and asked uh, my son and some of his friends to try it. And it was really seeing sort of uh, them be transfixed. Um, that really helped me to go, wow, this is something that I want to get behind and we need to get into classrooms because um, if we can motivate and excite uh, students, the learning outcomes will be greater. And so uh, I know that that sounds, uh, you know, simply, you know, I just brought it into my own home and in my own home I saw um, a tremendous result and, and that was my aha moment. When you can pull your own uh, children and, and friends uh, away from their video gaming <laughs> to be learning, um, that's, pretty, that's pretty powerful. It's more bringing the quality screen time to the kids and encourage them to learn and want them to learn more using the technology that is already there. That is a beautiful way to put it. That's fantastic. And if we talk about uh, the challenges are there, I'm sure that because we're talking about immersive technologies, because augmented reality is still a very, very new concept, and many schools are reluctant to onboard it for different reasons. But uh, And again, the teachers, the educators, and generally also a little bit reluctant in thinking to bring it into the classroom. What, to your opinion, uh, what are the actual main core challenges, two or three, that you came across? Well, I, I think I mentioned some of them earlier. First is classroom management, um, is how do you manage a uh, classroom of, of students um, using this technology? First of all, you have to get the technology, uh, you have to prepare it in advance so that you're able to very quickly get uh, all of the students participating. And that, that, that requires a little uh, pre-class um, uh, preparation because you, you just don't have enough time in, a, in your period to be able to uh, clumsily roll anything out. It has to be very quick and you have to be prepared. So it's the preparation. Mm -hmm. to do the work, and then it's while they're doing it, uh, keeping everybody on task and, and not disrupted. And, you know, somebody has a problem with this, somebody has a problem with that, 
Um, I keep talking about the VR glasses because I honestly think that will be the first way that they that schools are using this. And you know, you're going to have a student who doesn't want to keep it on his head, and you're going to have a student who's gonna it's not going to fit. And you know, one teacher for 25 or 30 students, getting all of them comfortable with that will take work. And it, like anything, once they are used to it. Uh, and the kids like it, they will help each other and, and it will be, uh, classroom management will become less of a problem the more it's being used. And then you've got the post classroom, which is uh, getting all of the kids to uh, uh, tidy everything up, uh, package everything back, get everything um, clean and, um, and, and uh, put away in order to get to the next class of activities or whatever they're going to do in the next period of their school day. Uh, and then you have to have a teacher who is willing to go into their lesson plan and figure out how to use it and to uh, integrate it in. Absolutely. And it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, about also the hardware that uh, it's maintaining the hardware when we talk about virtual reality. And I think we can also say that uh, one of the differentiation between the augmented reality is uh, all you have is the iPad when you use it and you don't require to have all those glasses, etc. That's true. I think we will see the headset because there's been much more momentum for that here in the U.S augmented reality will follow. Okay. Well, Rita, thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure having you. And is there anything else that we haven't covered and you would really like to share on this topic? Well, I'd love to be able to come back in six months uh, or a year and be able to um, share um, how much progress we have made. Because I think that this is um, a trend that we're going to see evolve and grow. And um, I'd also like to share if you, if you have a place on your website for your listeners to be able to share their stories, um, it would be tremendous for us to build a community. Absolutely. That would be a great thing. First of all, we'll be glad to have you back again in six months and, uh, you know, ask your opinion how things have changed, what you have experienced. Uh, so please, you know, feel free. You're very welcome again. And uh, secondly, if you have any resources that uh, you know and you would like to share with our listeners, we can definitely put them under your podcast and uh, people can have access to that. Beautiful. And thank you. And so my parting words are just try it. I like that one. This is probably the best encouragement because if you don't try it, you would never know. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. And to all the, the uh, viewers, uh, I wish you a, a happy uh, summer uh, school break. And we look forward to talking to you again uh, in the new school year. Thank you, Rita, for being with us. And thank you so much for all the valuable information and your professional opinion. Everything changes.